Hey everyone, this is Jake Munger. You are listening to the Zoologist Podcast. I hope you're ready. We've got a very exciting episode on tap for today. We're going to be learning more about some of the amazing creatures that inhabit our planet. We're going to be learning facts and hearing stories all centered around animals, all centered around the animal kingdom. I hope you're as excited to go on this journey as I am. Now let's get ready to get wild. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for hopping on and listening to this week's episode of the Zoologist Podcast. I hope you're all having a wonderful start to your week, wherever you are in the world. And I hope you're ready because we have a very exciting topic on hand for today. We are going to be learning all about tigers. Tigers are super, super cool. They are symbols of power and strength in many different Asian cultures, and it's not hard to see why. Uh, These animals are one of the most impressive and fearsome carnivores walking the planet today. And in this episode, we are going to be learning about some of the attributes and characteristics that make these animals so awe-inspiring and why they could be appropriately called nature's very own cheat code. Let's dive in. Hello, everyone. Thank you once again so much for hopping on and listening to today's episode. I have been looking forward to recording this episode for a week now, ever since last week's episode. I had a ton of fun with the new format. Uh, If you haven't had a chance to listen to last week's episode, go ahead and give that a listen right after this. It's all about venomous creatures. I highly recommend it. It's quite honestly one of my favorite episodes that I've ever done. Uh, So go ahead and hop on after this and listen to that one. Uh, Also, if you get a chance, do me a favor and hop on to our Twitter profile. You can find us at thezoologist.net slash Twitter. Uh, Go ahead and tweet us and leave us a review of the show, what you think, what you like, what you dislike. Uh, It can be about the new format or it can just be about other things. So go ahead and leave us a tweet. Follow us while you're at it. Uh, We always appreciate the feedback. We love hearing what you have to say about the show. Alrighty, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but for... Just under a year, very recently, I was living in Malaysia, and Malaysia is a wonderful country, by the way. I highly recommend visiting to all of you. Uh, It's a a wonderful place, great people, absolutely amazing people, amazing food as well. Uh, But one of the things that I really loved about Malaysia was the nature there. Uh, You can find a wide array of different plants and animals. Uh, Southeast Asia has some of the most biodiversity of any region in the world. Uh, It has some of the oldest rainforests. In fact, I believe they are the oldest rainforests on the planet. Uh, They're millions and millions of years old, and they're teeming with animal life, all sorts of different birds, insects. You can find elephants, you can find deer, you can find tapirs, so just all sorts of different animals down there. But of all of these animals, the animal that the Malaysian government chose for its national animal was the Malayan tiger. And this decision, it's not unique. There are several other Asian countries, six to be exact, that use the tiger as their national animal. And honestly, when you think about it, it makes sense. I mean, tigers have been symbols of power and strength in many different Asian cultures. I mean, they have been capturing the uh, the hearts and the minds of the people that have lived alongside them for thousands of years, and there's a very good reason for that. Uh, And today, I want to go over some of the attributes that make the tiger so awe-inspiring, that make the tiger one of the world's top apex predators and one of the most feared animals in the world, to the point where it's just not fair. I mean, appropriately, you could call these animals nature's cheat code because they have so many abilities that are just super, super overpowered. So we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk a little bit more about some of these attributes that tigers have that make them so powerful. But first, I want to give a little bit of background information on tigers first, just to talk about where they come from and just give you a little bit more information about these cats. So tigers first began to appear on the scene about two million years ago. This is when tigers first began to distinctly evolve from other cats. They quickly spread throughout Asia. Historically, tigers uh, could be found from Western Asia, along the shores of the Caspian Sea, uh, parts of the Middle East and Central Asia, all the way down to India, uh, Southeast Asia, Indonesia, China, Siberia, so just all over the place in Asia. Uh, Today, it's a much sadder scene. They only inhabit about 7% of their historic range, 
They can be found in pockets throughout India. In fact, India has the highest population of wild tigers in the world, just over 3,000. Uh, they can also be found throughout Southeast Asia, Sumatra, China, and Siberia. Um, there are six subspecies of tiger currently living. There are the uh, Bengal tigers, the Sumatran, the Indochinese, South China, uh, Siberian, and the Malayan, which we've talked a little bit about already. Uh, in addition to this, there are three subspecies that are now extinct. Those are the Bali, the Javan, and the Caspian tigers. And these tigers are the largest cats in the world. They are absolutely massive. The biggest can grow to be over 600 pounds and reach a length of up to 13 feet. Even the smallest subspecies weigh well over 200 pounds and can grow to be about 6 feet long. So definitely nothing to sneeze at. These are cats that are extremely large, and as you would expect, such a large animal has an immense amount of power, and in the tiger's case, they definitely need it, because while they have been known to hunt down smaller prey items, including termites, uh, the preferred prey of the tiger is medium to large-sized herbivores, such as deer, wild boars. Uh, if they're around human settlements, they might hunt cattle or goats. They could hunt larger animals such as rhinos, water buffalo, elephant calves, and they'll even hunt down larger predators such as bears, uh, crocodiles, and leopards. And so as you imagine, this requires an immense amount of strength in order to take down such large prey. And the tiger definitely has it. The way that they're built allows them to hunt down such large animals. They have a very muscular body, lots of muscle, very thick, very dense bones, and in addition to this, they have very powerful legs. They can hit speeds of up to 40 miles per hour, and they can jump as high as 16 feet. Uh, in addition to this, with a running start, they can leap forward up to 33 feet. So when tigers, what they'll do is, when they hunt their prey, they'll, they'll pounce, they'll jump onto it, and then in order to deliver a killing blow, what they'll do is they'll actually bite down on the throat of the animal that they're attempting to kill. Uh, and what this does is it'll either crush the windpipe or it'll sever an artery. And the reason that this is possible is because tigers have an extremely powerful bite. The canines of a tiger can grow to be three inches long, the largest of any cat. And what's really cool is that these fangs, these teeth, have pressure-sensitive nerves that allow the tiger to know where it needs to bite down in order to kill its prey. In addition to this, tigers also have scissor-like back teeth, which are built to uh, shear through meat. Definitely something you don't want digging into your flesh. A factor into all this, that tigers have a bite force of over 1,000. It's not the strongest in the animal kingdom, but it's definitely nothing to doubt, look down upon, especially when you consider that humans have a bite force that is six times less powerful than a tiger's at just over 160. Uh, so, very, very powerful bite. Definitely a bite that you don't want to be on the wrong end of. In addition to this bite, tigers also have extremely powerful paws. Uh, these paws are huge. They're 8 by 8 inches on average. Uh, and they can generate a ton of force. Just a, a swipe of a tiger's paw can generate 10,000 pounds of force, which is enough to shatter bones, uh, crack spines. In addition to that, on these paws... These tigers have retractable claws, which are very sharp and which give the tiger the ability to hold on to and grapple uh, prey to make sure it doesn't get away once they've got a hold of it. So all of this adds up to an animal, a predator, that is extremely powerful. Just to give you an idea of how strong these animals are, uh, I want to share a story that I found while I was doing research. Uh, so when tigers make a kill, they're very, very protective of it. Uh, they'll sometimes drag it into underbrush or other vegetation where they can keep it hidden. And if they are going to leave it for any amount of time, they'll often cover it with dirt or leaves in order to cover it up and keep other predators from finding it. Well, one time it was observed a tiger uh, was seen dragging the carcass of an adult gar. If you don't know what a gar is, it's kind of like a, a big muscular cow. They've also been called the Indian bison. And they can weigh upwards of a ton, so very, very heavy. This tiger was seen dragging this carcass about 40 feet. And I guess 13 men went out to try to move this carcass, and they couldn't get it to budge. They couldn't move it at all. Uh, 
So that should give you an idea of just how strong these animals are. Tigers are immensely, immensely powerful. Now, tigers, I mentioned just now that they're very protective of their kill. They have very good reason to be protective of their meals because, first of all, that powerful frame requires a lot of fuel to keep it going, and tigers can eat up to 80 pounds of meat in a sitting. But more urgently, despite all these adaptations, despite all of these things that they have to bring down their prey, uh, tigers have a very low success rate when it comes to hunting. They only are successful about 10% of the time when it comes to hunting down their prey. Alrighty, I think that's a good place to take a break. We've talked a little bit about tigers, some of their adaptations that allow them to be powerful and fearsome hunters. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the adaptations that tigers have to uh, work well within their environment. Don't go anywhere. Are you a brand new podcaster, hoping to share what you're passionate about to whoever's willing to listen, but you aren't sure where to start? Navigating the logistics of your podcast can be confusing, from tracking growth to getting your podcast on the biggest platforms like Apple and Spotify. That's why I use Captivate. Captivate is a podcast publishing site that's user-friendly and offers everything you need to fulfill your podcast's full potential. They'll help you publish your podcast to all of the most popular platforms, as well as help you track your growth through daily, weekly, 28, and 90-day download numbers, as well as the averages so you can see where your podcast might be flourishing or floundering. What's more, they'll help you with promotion and advertising, they offer free courses on how to start and run the perfect podcast, and they even throw in a free website with your subscription, completely customizable to fit your podcast's personality. You can sign up now starting at $19 a month, and you'll even get a free 7-day trial so you can decide whether or not it's right for you. Sign up today at thezoologist.net slash Captivate, and what's more, you'll be supporting my show. Captivate truly is a podcaster's best friend. Welcome back as we continue our discussion about tigers. We've talked a little bit about how strong tigers are, about some of their other powerful attributes and characteristics, such as their bite, uh, their paws. And I, I mentioned that tigers can run quite fast. They can hit top speeds of 40 miles per hour. But here's the thing, is that tigers, like all big cats, they have very poor stamina. So they can hit these top speeds, but if they get involved in a prolonged chase, they're probably not going to catch up. They're probably not going to catch their prey. And so what tigers do instead is they are ambush predators. They'll sneak up on their prey, and they'll bring it down by surprise. In order to pull this off, tigers have a couple of different adaptations. First of all is their coat. Uh, the stripes obviously provide excellent camouflage and tall grass and other vegetation, but it's their orange coat that really helps. And orange might seem like a very conspicuous choice to us, but here's the thing that you might not know, is that most of the tiger's prey is what's called dichromatic, which means the photoreceptors in their eyes can only perceive two primary colors, blue and green. Uh, in humans and apes, for contrast, our eyes are trichromatic. We have three different primary colors that we can perceive, including red. Uh, so because their prey cannot perceive this third primary color, the orange coat of a tiger actually, to them, blends in perfectly with the vegetation that surrounds it while it might be hunting. So it's very, very difficult to spot. This makes the orange coat an excellent evolutionary adaptation and one that gives the tiger excellent camouflage when it's hunting down its prey. In addition to this, tigers also have pads on their paws that allow them to walk silently as they're stalking uh, other animals. Now, in addition to being very stealthy, tigers are also excellent swimmers. In fact, tigers actually have webbed paws, which blew my mind when I learned about it this week. That is absolutely insane. Uh, but tigers are excellent swimmers. They've been observed crossing rivers that are 18 miles across. And they've been seen swimming in open waters up to nine miles. So very, very good swimmers. It's believed that the reason they swim so much is to stay cool in hotter climates. Now, in addition to this, uh, tigers will also use the water to hunt down their prey. Sometimes they'll chase their prey into the water, they'll trap it there, and from there they can, they can catch it. And what's really cool about this is it shows just how intelligent tigers are. Tigers are very, very smart animals. Uh, just to give you another idea of how smart they are, these tigers actually have a very good short-term memory, a better short-term memory than we do, in fact. 
Uh, the synapses in a tiger's brain are extremely strong and it allows the tiger to create short-term memories that last 30 seconds longer than ours do. So in addition to their power and their strength, they've also been blessed with incredible brains. Uh, brains as well as bronze is the tiger. Now, tigers also have an incredible array of very finely tuned senses that allow them to work extremely well within their environment, especially when they're hunting. Uh, take their vision, for example. We all know cats have excellent vision, especially night vision. The reason for this is because, like our eyes, tigers have a large percentage of photoreceptors called rods. These rods are very sensitive to light, and they're the primary reason why we can see at night. The thing is, though, is that cats have a much higher percentage of these photoreceptors than we do. And it allows them to see in the dark six to eight times better than we can. In addition to this, they also have a structure at the back of their eyes called the tapetum lucidum. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, this structure reflects light that hasn't already been absorbed by the eye. It reflects it back into the eye. And it gives the tiger, gives the cat a clear picture. It's kind of like a mirror that reflects the light back into the eye. Uh, in addition to this, they can also expand their pupils to be extremely large. It can pick up more light that way, let more light into the eye. Um, the thing is, though, is that when your pupil expands that much, you also lose the ability to see nearby objects clearly. And to overcome this, tigers have a trick up their sleeve. Those whiskers are there for a reason. They give the tiger another uh, kind of an extra way of sensing the environment around them. The thing about these whiskers is that they have deeper roots than other hairs on the tiger's body, and the roots are surrounded by a small capsule of blood. When the roots, uh, or when the whisker of a tiger is disturbed in any way, uh, the root will displace the blood, amplifying the movement. This is picked up by sensory nerves and sent in impulses back to the brain, which deciphers those movements as sensory information. Tigers can use their whiskers as a way to navigate their way through the darkness or through tightly enclosed spaces. It gives them kind of an, another way of getting around when their sight might be compromised. And the thing is, is that these whiskers, we all know about the whiskers on a tiger's face, on their cheeks, but they actually have whiskers throughout their body, including their front legs, which allow them to be able to get a better feel for, literally a better feel for what's around them from all angles. In addition to their whiskers, tigers also have an excellent sense of hearing. And this hearing, I, I actually saw one source list it as potentially their, their most acute sense, which is crazy to think about when you think about an animal with such good vision. But these, this hearing can pick up sounds that are much lower uh, in frequency and much higher in frequency than human beings are able to hear. This allows them to pick up high frequency noises that uh, their prey might be making so they can hunt better. Uh, but it also might be a way for them to communicate with one another. So, when you take all of these things into account, when you add them all together, it adds up to an animal that is extremely powerful, that has a number of different adaptations that make it one of the top apex predators in the world. And it's because of this that tigers have been so revered and held in such high esteem by several different cultures for hundreds and hundreds of years now. In Chinese culture, for example, uh, the tiger is considered to be the king of beasts. Uh, it symbolizes strength and bravery. In ancient China, tigers would be engraved onto weapons uh, because it was believed that they were guardian spirits that would inspire warriors to perform bravely on the battlefield. In addition to this, they were also added to uh, everyday objects because the tiger was seen as a divine animal that could ward off evil spirits. The tiger is also one of the 12 animals of the Chinese zodiac, People born in the year of the tiger are said to be ambitious, courageous, generous, and self-confident in addition to having a sense of justice and a commitment to helping others for the greater good. In Indian culture, meanwhile, the tiger is a symbol of magnificence, of beauty, of power, and fierceness. Uh, it's also been associated with bravery and valor, and tigers also hold a very important place within Hindu mythology. They're seen as the vehicle for the goddess Darga. Despite how important tigers are uh, within all these cultures, however, they are still one of the most endangered animals on the planet. Uh, tigers have been threatened for decades now. 
back in the at the beginning of the 20th century, there were about 100,000 tigers left in the wild. Uh, as of 2010, about 110 years later, there were uh, just over 3,000 left in the wild. Now, the good news is, is that in many places, their population is stabilizing and even increasing. The worldwide tiger population is up to 4,500, uh, but these tigers are still at high risk. Some of the biggest threats to tigers today are uh, habitat loss, as well as poaching. The body parts for tigers are often used in uh, traditional medicines, and so these tigers will be hunted for their claws, their bones, and for other body parts as well. Uh, there are more tigers in U.S. zoos right now than there are out in the wild, which is very, very sad. All right, one more fact that I want to share about tigers in conclusion, uh, a fact that I learned this week that I thought was really, really cool. So tigers are quite intimidating animals. There's a lot about the tiger that's very intimidating. Uh, one of the most intimidating things about a tiger is its roar. Uh, tigers are one of a few big cats that can roar, and those roars are very, very loud. They can reach up to 114 decibels, which, just for context, that's louder than most NFL stadiums get on a, on a Sunday. So extremely loud. It can be heard from two miles away. But what's even scarier is that these roars, they emit these low-frequency vibrations, these low-frequency noises. And uh, these low-frequency sounds have the ability to temporarily paralyze any animals that might be in the area, including humans. So just imagine that you're trying, you come across a tiger and it roars and you can't move. I mean, that would be absolutely terrifying. So just one more fact to show you just how powerful these tigers are. They're like something out of a fantasy show. Absolutely insane. And with that, I think it's a good place to end off. So you can hopefully see now, tigers are extremely, they live up to the ideals of bravery, of fierceness, of power, of strength that they've come to represent. They are one of the top apex predators in the world, but they're also extremely threatened. And hopefully, as time moves forward, we can continue to help the tiger increase its numbers, and we can continue to see these incredible cats uh, stalk the forests of Asia for a long time. Thank you once again so much for hopping on and listening to today's episode of the Zoologist Podcast. Hopefully you had as much fun learning about tigers as I did this past week. Uh, if you'd like to continue learning more about these magnificent cats, go ahead and check out the research links. Those will be in the show notes. Uh, go ahead and leave us a review on Spotify or iTunes as well while you're at it. Let us know what you think of the show. And then if you get a chance, if you have a little bit more time, go ahead and listen to some more episodes of the Zoologist Podcast. There are some great episodes in our back catalog that I know you'll enjoy. So if you liked this one, go ahead and uh, listen to a few of those as well. I uh, hope you all have an amazing rest of your week. And as always, have a wild day.